The relevance of animation to geography and cartography is obvious. Geographers tend to investigate phenomena that change through time and space, perhaps because so few things stay the same. To animate is to enliven, to impart interest, to inspire to action. Animation seems a natural medium for representing an ever-changing world. This video essay is the result of a seminar on dynamic mapping held in the Department of Geography at Penn State in the spring of 1991. The objective of the seminar was to consider the fundamental ways in which the medium of animation differs from static graphics in practice and in principle. Here we present a range of applications of time that can be exploited in geographic analysis and communication. In a second essay entitled Visual and Dynamic Variables in Cartographic Animation, we explore how elementary design principles devised in the context of static graphics are affected when the additional dimension of time is appended to a display. Gershmill has referred to cartographic animation as four-dimensional cartography. The difference between static and animated graphics is the incorporation of the temporal dimension. Three general applications of the temporal dimension appear to be possible. To emphasize the existence of a phenomenon, to depict an attribute of the phenomenon, and to express change in the phenomenon's position or attributes. The simplest dynamic maps are those that can be replaced by a single static graphic. These flashing point symbols are effective because of the sensitivity of human vision to change, but nothing is actually changing in the distribution they represent. Nearly everyone has seen TV weather maps that depict the flow of the jet stream with sprite symbols or color cycling. Here we use color cycling in a similar way to emphasize the directional attribute of symbols representing Eocene ocean circulation. The circulation pattern represents mean annual flow as postdicted by a general circulation model. The apparent motion is redundant with the orientation of the flow arrows, enhancing the hierarchical structure of the graphic, but adding no new information. Animation is clearly effective in enhancing displays of static information, but the greatest potential of the medium for cartographers is to represent phenomena that change through time and space. Now we consider three strategies for exploiting the temporal dimension in displays of dynamic information. Flybys, time series, and re-expression. A flyby involves changes in viewpoint, Flybys over image models of Los Angeles, Mars, and other exotic landscapes produced by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory are perhaps the most widely viewed examples of scientific visualization. Here we examine one stage of a three-dimensional forest growth model. Whether in interactive analytical environments or in educational presentations, Flybys enable viewers to inspect a cartographic representation as if they were holding it in their own hands. Displaying data that change through time is the most obvious and commonly used application of cartographic animation. Time series sequences are typically viewed in chronological order at a constant tempo. This example was prepared to dramatize the diffusion of acquired immune deficiency syndrome for an audience of skeptical high school students. One student shared his impression that the spread of the disease leaves no place to hide. The preceding strategies for cartographic animation should be familiar to most viewers. Re-expression is the least obvious application of the temporal dimension. 
The term is adopted from John Tukey's provocative text, Exploratory Data Analysis. The goal of re-expression is to reveal unexpected patterns in data sets and thereby to raise new and potentially fruitful questions. In the context of cartographic animation, re-expression involves changing the composition, order, and rhythm of time series data sets to, exp to facilitate exploratory analysis. Brushing is another term coined by Tukey. It refers to the selection and analysis of a subset of cases from a data set according to some distinguishing attribute. Here we introduce a time series sequence of electoral college votes for president from 1912 to 1988. After previewing the time series, we will demonstrate how brushing may be applied. Now we brush the series to display the longest continuous sequence of victories by candidates of a single party. Here again we brush the series to highlight elections in which candidates garnered more than 85% of electoral votes. Depending on the criterion used to select subsets of the data, brushed sequences may be consecutive or not. 